So following the same cadence as we've seen from previous years, that time has come where ARM has announced new CPU core designs for the next generation of smartphone uh, systems on a chip. In this video, I want to look at the two new CPU cores that it has announced. And I have another video where I want to talk about the new GPU that it has announced. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so ARM has released two new CPU cores for smartphones that will come out in 2025. Some of these, we may see some announcements at the end of 2024, but predominantly we're gonna see these in devices in 2025. And the main takeaway here is these are designed for three nanometers. And what that means is that our ARM are actually being involved in the actual layout physically the transistor layout that gets sent to the foundry for the building of these devices. They even talk about now actually working with GDS2 files, which is the type of files that are used by foundries for the actual physical layout. And they work with Samsung and with TSMC on their three nanometer process. Now there are two new CPU core designs. The Cortex A520 remains the same as last time. However, it has been uh, optimized for three nanometers. So that physical layout I was talking about, ARM are still helping its partners with that. However, the actual microarchitecture is the same. So what are the two CPUs for this year? We've got a new Cortex X CPU. It's the Cortex X925. We were expecting it to be called the X5. We had the X1, the X2, the X3, the X4. And then we thought we'd have the X5, but marketing change here. It's now the X925 to line up the X series with the A series. So we have the X9 and then the A7 and the A5 series kind of all lines up. You'll see what I mean by that because we've now got a new Cortex A7 series and this is the A725. So we've got the 925, the 725, we've got the 520. And there's also a new GPU which I cover in a different video. And this is the layout that ARM see uh, as their default configuration. A lot of their testing and their numbers are based on this default configuration. Interestingly, it's got two X925 cores in it, then four Cortex-A725 cores in it, and two Cortex-A520 cores. So it's a two plus four plus two layout. Something new from ARM in terms of their default configuration. Have we've seen multiple variations when you think about you know, what uh, MediaTek are doing, when you think about what Google are doing with their tensor chips. We've seen lots and lots of different interesting layouts with the X cores and the A cores, but now ARM's default configuration with the two X925 cores. Now these are some slides from ARM. I'll try and show you some of the things they were highlighting. First of all, 36% single core Geekbench score increase compared to 2023 premium Android. And what does that mean? What that means is we see two areas of uh, increase. The first is we see an increase because of the IPC gains. That's the instructions per cycle gains. How much the processor can do every time there's a clock cycle. It doesn't matter whether it's running at one gigahertz or 3.8 gigahertz, how much you can do it every cycle. And second, we've got this move to three nanometers, as I said, that in itself allows higher clock speeds, allows uh, more power efficiency. So the two things combined together, we're gonna see this 36% increase uh, uh, compared to previous Android premium phones. And then we can see here, there are some technical things which we will dive into, but the key thing here, three nanometer physical implementation means better efficiency. So that's what this uh, chip is uh, aimed at. So here are some uh, ISO numbers. When they mean by ISO, they mean imagine this was running on the same process node, you're running at the same frequency, you're running at the same number of sides of cache. So basically, you took that CPU core and you put it into last year's phone, you're going to see a 15% increase in performance across the board, even higher under some circumstances. So the way they've done the interior design, that's called the micro architecture, means there's better uh, performance for a whole range of different tasks, as you see here, application responsiveness, web browsing, large image decode, and so on. And of course, there is also mention of AI improvements because we are moving more and more. It's important to see how well LLMs and other machine learning tasks run on these processors. So they are seeing uh, 
increases in that as well, just because of the way the microarchitecture is designed. Now, some of the front ends is the microarchitecture changes. We can see that the branch prediction has been improved. There's a twice the size instruction window. That means now that 1,500 instructions are being tracked by the CPU to work out what can happen out of order, what the branches are going to be. It's, it's got a window that it's looking at the current thing that's running and it's tracking a huge number of instructions trying to get that best performance uh, out of it. And then we can see some other uh, improvements in instruction fetch, for example, two times increase in the L1 instruction uh, available bandwidth, not the size, but the bandwidth, how quick it can get those out of the cache and so on. So some front end changes on the X925. There's also been some main core changes. Notice it's remaining at 10 wide, just like the Cortex X4. How we've now got more uh, single instruction multiple data or floating point execution units from four up to six. The integer ALU pipeline has uh, been increased. For example, there are now some two cycle operation ALU specifically dedicated to two cycle operations, therefore freeing up the one cycle ones for any kind of parallelism that they want to have. Uh, there's been an improvement in the integer multiply execution units and the FP compare execution. These have gone up. Basically, they study the workloads that are traditional workloads for Android, uh, in gaming, in normal productivity applications, in photography, and they work out where would be the best place to put these execution units and to give the best level of parallelization. And finally, at the back end, uh, there's now four load pipelines, for example, increasing the microarchitecture uh, width at, that, at the back end, two times increase in the L1 data cache bandwidth. Again, that's the bandwidth uh, and an increase in the depth and latency of the back end. So all in all, these are micro architectural changes that give us that 15% boost in IPC compared to the X4 running under the same conditions. So not an increased uh, clock speed and so on. Same conditions, it's just 15% better, better design. So that's a double digit increase in performance, which is, as always, ARM have done that year after year for the last few years. So that's an, a major achievement, double digit performance increases just because of the design, just because they made it better than last year's design. And then, of course, we've got the new Cortex A725. So that's a middle core. So you're looking at sustained performance. Uh, you're looking at what it can do long term, not the peak, but what it can do over a longer period. And we can see here there are changes both for three nanometer changes in the architecture. And here again, slides from ARM, just showing some of the different architectural changes inside of the A725. This is really a generational improvement compared to the A720, it's A725. So it's not the same chip, but has been reworked on the inside. Look, for example, increased reorder buffer, increased instruction issue queues. So there have been some reworking that has made it a better chip than last year's one. So as you can see here, this very nice power performance graph showing the performance. So the more further to the right it is, that means you've got greater performance. And the lower down it is, means less, using less power. So as you can see, compared to the A78, the A720, this new variant is faster and uses less power. So what more could you ask for? So looking at those numbers, what are my estimated Geekbench scores for smartphones with the X925 and the A725 in it. Well, of course, a caveat here depends very much on the core configurations because, for example, ARM's default configuration is this two times X925, four times A725, two times A520. And that's very different to, for example, if there was a, a MediaTek kind of pattern that we had in the 9300, 9300, you had one X25 at a higher clock speed and three more. X925s at a lower clock speed, and then four A725s, uh, no uh, A520s. This is what kind of if you followed the Dimensity A9300 uh, pattern into this next one, the 9400, whatever they call it. Uh, so that does very much depend on the different configurations. Google are doing different things as well. So we don't know what the core configuration will be from any particular uh, smartphone chip mobile chip maker but here are my estimates uh, for single core i reckon we're going to be looking at somewhere in the region of 2900 2900 for single core geekbench 6.3 
uh, upwards. And then for multi-core, I think we were looking at 7,700 uh, in that area. Again, multi-core specifically, depending very much on how those cores are laid out. Okay, so there you have it, the Cortex-X925, the Cortex-A725. And as I said, I do have another video about the new GPU. Please do watch out for that. If you like this video, please do think about giving it a thumbs up. And if you like these kinds of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.